I'm Tiffany Simmons. My, my phone, my screen says T Simmons. Um, I'm the executive director of the Doyon Foundation and I'm super excited to have everybody on today. Good morning, I'm Lenora Wright out with TCC. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pearson Milk and I'm the scholarship manager here at Doyon Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first ever education fair in partnership with Rural Student Services and Tana Chiefs Conference. Before we get started, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. So I, I went, so Deanna, could you introduce yourself, please? I'm Deanna Fitzgerald. I grew up in Dot Lake and um, I reside in Fairbanks now. And also I have Kenisha Moses with me and I'll have her introduce herself. Hi everybody, I'm Kenisha Moses. I'm from North Bay, Alaska and I am the Indigenous Wellness Outreach Coordinator here at Rural Student Services. And, and I um, here at Rural Student Services, I'm the undergraduate coordinator, but um, also I advise students with the Department of Alaska Native Studies and Rural Development. And are you both uh, recipients of Doyon Foundation scholarships? Yes, we both are. <laughs> and and from uh, like our village councils and um, yeah. There's so many opportunities and we're so blessed that we had um, those scholarships that really helped us during um, getting our bachelor's degree. Thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, if Alan Hayton could do our opening prayer. Equadat, Kutikucha, Jacob Kuti, Chuk drink with a second to hide Naron, Naronia, Zathliner and Jills, a caged night in and sell night. G. Quincy Kukoha, a kinjit go by in leads, a tight coats are not seen, Guji coats are not seen. G. The tuck in the dingy water, chill aged Nazahatagarin G. Amen. Thank you so much, Alan. Uh, next will be our welcome from Aaron Shutt. Before we get started, I would like for those of you that are just getting on, if you could put your students' names in the chats to be entered to win prizes at the end. Thank you. This is Aaron Shutt. I'm president and CEO of Doy Unlimited. I wanted to welcome you and thank you for our, your participation in the Doyon Foundation Education Fair. I wanted to also remind you of the importance education has played in our history of our company and the advice that our elders and leaders have given since many years ago. I'll start with the 1915 meeting of the Tanana Chiefs with Judge Wickersham, where our early leaders who were raised mainly in the time before contact with non-Native people made education a center point of their advocacy with Judge Wickersham and the United States government. And that meeting happened in Fairbanks, and you can learn about it in um, many of the materials that Tanana Chiefs and Doyon have put together. And then fast forward to the 1980s when Doyon formed the Doyon Foundation and made major commitments to education of our people and encouragement of young people in particular to get formal educations. So Doyon has emphasized educational advancement and opportunities ever since, and we're very proud of that all the way to the current. And that's why we're helping host the uh, Doyon Foundation career fair that you all are attending. So. Again, I wanted to um, thank you all for your participation, encourage you to ask questions, ask for help. There are many resources out there, both financial, but other resources around making your educational dreams come true. So again, uh, on behalf of Doyon, our board of directors and our employees, thank you for participating in the Doyon Foundation Education Fair. 
good luck. Okay, thank you from Aaron Shutt. Our next is our alumni speaker, Benjamin Schwartz, who is also our current board member. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see everybody. Um, I'll, uh, I'll go through with some of the questions I was asked and give the best answers <laughs> I could think of. Um, my name's Ben Schwartz. I was born in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, my mom's Polly Islip, and I spent my childhood in Tanana, Northway, and Palo Alto, uh, California, which is rather unique. Um, my dad lives in California. Um, I received my degree in business management and communications from Linfield College in Oregon, and I uh, received my master's degree as an executive master's in business administration or an MBA at the University of Nevada. Um, and this actually got accomplished in August, this past August. Um, the next question I was asked is, why did you choose uh, your degree and what inspired you? Um, and I guess the best way of saying it is my story a little bit. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was graduating high school, except for basketball, because that was all that was important to me in high school. And, uh, and, and so I went to college with kind of an open mind. Uh, I joined groups while in college. I did public speaking, collegiate basketball, and uh, just making a lot of friends outside of my interests, which really helped me realize what, what I like to do. And, and I kind of came to the realization that I like to understand complex issues. Um, and I thought the most fun type of issues that I like resolving were business issues. So from there, I just wanted to become um, the best at figuring out uh, business issues. And so I did everything I could to, uh, to get better at that. Um, as I got better at understanding business, uh, similar to understanding anything, um, I understood how much I didn't know. And so I just became more curious and I kept learning more, which resulted in me going to get my MBA, uh, working for a consulting and accounting firm. And, uh, and, and now I'm uh, chasing my CPA. So it's not quite over yet, um, fortunately and unfortunately. <laughs> Um, I've always wanted to get better at understanding business so I can help other people that have more important things to do than have to worry about business. Uh, I think, you know, Doyon Foundation, a lot of the people here are, are a good example. Um, while they're focusing on doing services and programs, I like really playing with the numbers and understanding it um, from a business standpoint. Um, the, and actually the thought of helping uh, Doyon shareholders, the villages I lived, even attending a, a chief's conference who also helped me with my school um, really helped inspire me. And um, that's actually why I chose to work with tribal governments now. And that's what I do is I work with tribal governments using my school undergrad and graduate degree. I work with tribal governments and kind of untangling their business issues, um, both on the government side and their, their businesses. Um, the next question was, uh, how does culture influence me? And, and that's always a really interesting question because I, I, I think culture uh, influences my de decisions immensely. And, and when I was younger, I read this book uh, called Reservation Capitalism, which kind of talked about businesses and tribes and villages. And, uh, and I really wanted to, uh, to, to understand how culture and economic success can kind of relate to one another. And I've made it a life goal of mine to kind of find that balance. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I believe our culture is really who defines us and really is our backbone in, in, in accomplishing our different endeavors. Uh, the more, for my personal experience, the more I understand culture, the more strength uh, I'm enabled to pursue my goals. Okay, finally, I think I'm taking up a lot of your time and I don't want to take up too much time. Um, any advice that I want to give to the future and current students? Uh, this probably goes more for high school students, probably middle school students too. And this is just from my experience. And I would say just find what you really love to do and um, really relentlessly chase being uh, great at it. Um, 
economic success will follow uh, your abilities and your abilities will follow how much work you put into it and how much effort you put into it. At this point um, in most of the students' lives, especially, you know, middle school, high school, you have so many options of what you want to do and what really lights your fire. So, so, I, so I suggest really thinking about it and, uh, and really letting um, your passion be in your guiding light and, and and the Doyon Foundation, the Tan and Chiefs Conference, your villages, your culture will really get behind you and help you um, if you understand what it is that you want to do. And I know that they've helped me significantly in my in my uh, goals and dreams. Um, and now the, the the practical advice I guess I would have is uh, take take ownership of every assignment that you turn in because your teachers and professors are going to be on your side. Uh, Join as many communities as possible to open your uh, your outlook, and uh, and finally, my suggestion or more my hope is uh, get lots of sleep because uh, I get grumpy when I'm not uh, not resting. I hope uh, I hope everyone gets significant amounts of sleep. So that's that's all I got. I, I hope that helps. If there's any questions or anything, uh, I think my contact info is there, but just message me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Benjamin. And Tiffany. Hello, everybody. Um, so I, I began my journey with the Doyon Foundation as the executive director um, in May. And I'll just share a little bit about, about why. Um, working for the foundation was important to me. I grew up in Galena and uh, on the Yukon River, graduated from high school there, spent my life there. I was probably the shyest kid in the whole entire town. You said my name and I probably like, just like curled up into a ball, like you don't see me. Um, and when my mom sent me to Fairbanks to go to the University of Alaska Fairbanks, it was like this big city, which I had gone to for like the fair and, and different things like that, but not ever just kind of gone off on my own um, and so after three days of trying to register for school, I cried my eyeballs out and I begged my mom to buy me a ticket back home to Galena because I just couldn't do school. It was just, I thought it was too hard for me because I had a hard time registering. This is back in the day when you used to have to stand in lines for everything. And there was no, um, there were no, there was no online classes. There was no online payment and all those things that opportunities that there are today. Um, and so it was pretty overwhelming for me. And uh, my mom, being who she is, she did not get me a ticket back to Galena. She um, ended up getting me a lunch with the executive director of the Doyon Foundation at the time who came and like Benjamin had shared, you know, people want to help you. And what she did was she, you know, looked at where my obstacles were and helped me kind of get over those. And what seemed like mountains to me um, were just like little bumps in the road for her. And so, you know, I thought someday I wanna be able to go back and to give back um, like I was, you know, um, helped when I was a freshman at the college at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And so um, coming into this position and being from, you know, growing up in Galena, uh, you know, I thought, gosh, there's so many opportunities right now. We're in a digital age. Our high school, our college students are able to take courses online and even get a head start because we have college, we, we have credits for high school students to be able to take college courses. Um, and so one of the things I gave myself was I was a task was to challenge myself to find 100 jobs that can be done in a village. Um, and so there's a list of some of them that are here. Um, there's still, there's lots more. We just couldn't fit them all onto one screen. And hopefully before uh, my year is up in May, I'll have those 100 jobs listed out that I've challenged myself with. And as I was looking at these and I was like, i um, connecting them to different um, scholarships and things that we have or offer at the foundation. There's so much, even if you're going to be, it has on there the cook that we have some really cool opportunities out there for people to be able to go out and learn how to be cooks and chefs um, and going back into your community and being able to do those things um, all the way down to OSHA uh, safety for, you know, if you want the janitor or the custodian or to be able to manage a construction pro project or, you know, be the IT person in this, this day of gaming and online everything, you know, everybody needs an IT specialist to be able to be in their community to go 
and fix something at the city office, to fix something at the tribal office, to fix something at the school, because um, there aren't those services. And you know, some of these jobs can be held throughout the whole subregion. So you can be the IT technician in your community and then go travel out to these villages and um, be able to work in their communities as well to, to help them with their IT needs. So a lot of these jobs are not just jobs that, you know, if you don't have enough work in your community, you could do it throughout a whole subregion. Um, so I would really love if you have ideas to add to my list of 100 jobs in a, in a village, please send those my way, would greatly appreciate them. Um, and also you can see the pictures that are on here. These are some of the, the um, trips that I was able to take. I was very blessed when I started and got invited to the Chalkeeptic and the Tanana um, culture camps. So please keep us in mind as you guys are doing that to go and, and help the students and our youth and um, looking for their next grand adventure in continued education, whether it's a degree or a non-degree seeking course. Thank you, Pearson. Thank you so much. Okay, our next agenda item is uh, Rural Student Services at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, their 50th anniversary video. finally a recognition of our native cultures by the university as something of value. And when you do that for students, you do that for everybody, non-natives and natives alike. And they start accepting the native culture as a something of value. It's incredibly important for Rural Student Services to continue to be there, to be a place for students to find support both through the advisors, but then also brotherhood and sisterhood through the community of Alaska Native Rural Students that are here within the university. The department was created. It was created as SOS to begin with, um, Student Orientation Services, and then over the years it evolved to Rural Student Services. We're here to help students transition from small rural communities and small rural schools to a little bit more urban setting. And we often say we provide academic, cultural, and social support for our students. What we often hear from elders is being ourselves, being who we are in the world is really powerful and it actually will take you far. And so I think that would, that would be, you know, part of Rural Student Services is helping us to be who we are in the world in, a, in this place which, which can be really different. It was, it was like going into a forest that you had never been into before. They were kind and they were outgoing in a very gentle way. I felt like I was able to provide space, a safe space, for Native students and rural students. They could speak their Native language, they could practice collective values, just kind of take down all their armor that they carried around all day. We were just like doing our math homework and Kyla was sitting there drawing and then my friend was beating. They were just dancing in the back and it was just like, it was a really cool moment for me. We celebrate together, we eat together, we, we honor other people, we have award ceremonies for professors that help our students um, and I think that our students see and feel that connection. They understand us, they understand our way of lives, they understand our needs and I really like that about them. We take everybody out and go have a picnic out on the ski trails or go cross-country skiing, get people off campus with other students and with the advisor, tie in those connections, those positive connections. I was so close to leaving, and Sue pulled me aside and said, you know, you can do it. I, it was my last year, and, and things were just tough. And then that was the year I met my husband. <laughs> just knowing all that they do and all that they want to do for their students, they just there's just not enough hours in the day. Rural Student Services is a place that gives them space to be who they are to be where they came from and to plan a path forward so that they can give back to their community. 
global leadership in Alaska Native and Indigenous Studies is, is not just important for our Alaska Native and Indigenous students, it's important for everyone. Uh, learning from uh, teaching different cultures and, and different ways of knowing. Our intention is to grow as a, as a global center of excellence in Indigenous Studies and in supporting Indigenous students, and that's something that we're incredibly excited about. People here at RSS reassured me that I wasn't alone and that they'd go above and beyond to help me. I hope that they continue and continue and continue <laughs> to keep going because I don't know where I would be without RSS. Thank you so much to RSS for providing that amazing video, uh, Deanna and Tanisha. <laughs> yes, both um, Tanisha and myself, we use real student services when we we're getting our bachelor's degrees. And then we both work here. <laughs> Thank you, we appreciate all that you do. Um, as a student, I have used real student services since I was a freshman and I'm really thankful for every resource that they provided and it really has assisted me help pursue my educational goals. So I really recommend them. Okay, and our next agenda item will be going over employment and training with Tana Chiefs Conference. Good morning. Can we pause it right there, Christine? Yeah. Our trainers that we train is not so much as a school or university, but more of training and trades. And you can see that they do make quite a bit of money if you just go through our training and we're more than happy to help you get through those trainings. We're here to help financially with that. And hopefully you will be able to find jobs just for flagging. We just did the flagging. You can make anywhere from 34,000 to 52,000 after doing a four hour training and your certification is good for four years. Um, CDLs, which are commercial drivers, can earn up between 49,000 to 74,000. We also do heavy equipment training, construction, and construction, you can do anywhere from 20 to 70,000 based on certification, skills, and how many years you've been doing it. And has whoppers um, with Fairbanks North Star Borough here in Fairbanks. Um, you can start between 30 and 44,000. Um, best paying related CDL hazmat jobs can range from 70,000 to 144,000 a year. Um, and that later hazmat is usually the owner operator hazmat truck driver, CDL oil field drivers. And those are just a few of our trainings that we offer. Um, so you're more than welcome to take a look at um, our website and find if there's any trainings going on. And we also post on Facebook. So feel free. And then we're always here, Evelyn Akata or myself are here to help you. Um, resumes, applications, find job trainings, so we hope we um, can find something here too as well instead of just the normal college. And there is 113 unions just themselves in Alaska. Thank you. With the resumes, like I said, come in and we'll help you. But the do's and don'ts are pretty obvious. <laughs> Highlight your most relevant experiences. And the best rule of thumb is to turn in a different form of your resume 
for each different job or different role job that you want to do. Don't make a, you can make a pretty good one, but then you got to kind of tweak it for each job that you want to do. Don't just keep using the same one. And um, employers do not like you to use their job description for word for word. You're going to just want to learn to not use their exact wording. Um, also, do consider any volunteer work that you may have done or other non work experience. Um, because if that's in a job that you like, those other jobs that you do on the side as volunteer or skills or hobbies, add those. Those can always be helpful. Um, but on your resume, don't use more than two fonts. Um, always try to stay with one basic font. Samples of resumes here. There's tons of templates out there. You can Google them, YouTube them, even Microsoft Word has templates. Um, get creative with it. But remember, use the same font, no more than two, two different ones. We hope to hear from you and to help you through your employment ventures later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lenora. Okay, so um, for those of you getting on from different schools, my name is Pearson Milk and I'm a scholarship manager here at Doan Foundation. And here is some of our scholarship opportunities along with our deadlines. So we advertise that we have many pathways to success and that we give students second chances. We don't turn students away. So if we have a student who maybe didn't do well the first semester of college, which oftentimes that does happen, which we support all of our students and we want them to succeed. So we will support you and we'll still give scholarships, but we do ask that students keep in touch with us and let us know what is going on. So our scholarships, we have the part-time and full-time awards. The part-time scholarship is 1,600 and full-time is 2,400. We have competitive awards for undergraduate students. It's 7,000 for the academic year for a fall and spring. Graduate students get 9,000 for the academic year for the fall and spring, which would be 4,500 4, per semester. And doctorate students get 11,000. We also have a level up scholarship, which is for non-degree seeking students who would be pursuing like a CDL training, realtor, teacher recertification, health recertification, short-term classes and trainings that are under 120 hours can be awarded the exact amount up to 3,000. And we have the Kickstart Scholarship, which is for our high school students who are pursuing college credits. So if we have some high school students who are taking college courses, they're able to receive scholarships. And we have four, or we have three deadlines per year. So for the full-time and part-time awards and competitive awards, we have March 15th for summer and May 15th for fall and November 15th for the spring semester and for level up and kickstart the students can apply year round. For our level up scholarship, we have vocational and technical students who can apply for that. And then if the training goes over 120 hours, like if a student is pursuing a heavy equipment diesel mechanic degree, they can apply for our full-time and part-time awards as well as our competitive award if they're considered a full-time student. We've awarded heavy equipment, diesel mechanics, process technology, construction, welding, electrical training, CDL, refrigeration mechanics, and other vocational technical degrees. Our fall scholarship deadline will be soon approaching. Our deadline is May 16th. If you are a new student and you plan on attending college in the fall semester, I advise that you start working on your application soon just to make sure that you have enough time to turn in your documents. So our top fields of study and our, scholar our other scholarship opportunities. So when you are going to college, you have a tuition and you have to pay that by a certain deadline. So you can get scholarships through your tribal corporations and through your main corporation. So if you were from Northway or from Minto or Tanana, you can apply through your tribes. And then you can apply through your corporation, which would be Doyon, which would be our scholarship program. 
And there's also other opportunities through the, your university financial aid office. They have foundations that you can apply for scholarships from. Usually financial aid offices will do everything they can to make sure that you are getting all the scholarship opportunities that you can possibly get. There's also the Native American Indian College Fund. They have thousands of scholarships and you can apply for every single one if you're eligible. I've received scholarships from them and it's helped me a lot when I was first going to college. And also internship opportunities. On our Doyan Foundation website, you can find the internship opportunities tab and that we have a list of opportunities as well as other organizations like through Doy Unlimited, through First Alaskans. Internships are a very useful tool and oftentimes jobs will prioritize people who have had internships in that field of beforehand. For health, there's um, this is our top jobs and how many how many years of training and how long it would take for you to pursue these. So we have certified nursing assistant. That's a certificate program and it's a three month training. You can do that through universities and it's usually pretty quick. Radiology technician, which is a two year degree associate of applied science. Registered nurse is bachelor of science in nursing and health aid is a 15 week training and health aides can work through the villages. Business accounting is bachelor's degree in accounting, tribal management associates of applied science, Business Management Bachelor of Business Administration. And here is some pictures of our amazing students. Our two alumni, Monica Lee, she has a master's in business administration and Carrie Irwin Brown. She has a bachelor's degree in management international business, a master's certificate in Alaska Native Executive Leadership Program. And then here are some of our technical trainings. So CDL is a commercial driver's license and they have certificate training, which students are eligible to receive our level of scholarship. Diesel and heavy equipment, that's a certificate, but it's typically a full-time scholarship. So you would apply for the full-time award or be awarded the competitive. And then we have construction management. It's the two-year degree associate of applied science, professional piloting associate of applied science. And here's two pictures of our student Alumni, Ranch Brigitte II, Bachelor of Science in Petroleum Engineer from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In Science, Engineering, Bachelor of Science, Biological Science, Bachelor of Science, and Wildlife Biology, Bachelors of Science. And here is our board member and alumni, Matthew Calhoun. He has a degree. He has several degrees in civil engineering. He has a bachelor's, master's, and PhD. Michelle Quillen, she has a Bachelor's of Science in Biology and Conservation. And here is a list of our Doyan Foundation prizes that you will be, all the students who have given us their names will be entered to win. So we have a sports basket, which includes a bat and a baseball and a glove, a basketball and a water bottle. And then we have a beading basket, it includes so many beads, <laughs> I forgot to count how many, but there's I don't even want to say, but there's tons of beads, uh, yarn, thread, and all kinds of goods in there. And we'll also be giving away an iPad mini. So if, just double checking everyone sent to their first and last name. You can put it in the chat and you'll be entered to win one of these prizes. And we'll contact you. If you put your contact information, if you're not from calling in from a school, we can contact you after. And I wanna say thank you. We'll have the breakout rooms after this, but if you're in middle school and you are unable to participate in our breakout rooms, we'll be going through scholarship applications. You are welcome to go ahead and log off unless you'd like to participate. But I do wanna say thank you so much to everyone who called in and participated. We're so excited to be able to provide this resource for our future students and our current students. So thank you so much. And here is a video from our amazing students. Guayana, thank you so much for contributing to the scholarships that I have received. I'm very grateful for the university education that I am obtaining. Thank you. I would like to show my gratitude for the scholarships that you have given me. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Guayana. 
Thank you, Doyon, for your support. I'd like to say thank you to Doyon for her support in my education and continued support. Anabase. Anabase. Thank you guys for everything that you've done. Paul and I just want to thank the Doyon Foundation for all your support in helping me throughout this journey. Thank you for your financial support. Masi Cho. Hello, and thank you for supporting my college education. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to say basic to Doyon Foundation, to its board of directors, and the staff. Thank the Doyon Foundation for my support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Koyanakapat. Thank you, Doyon, for allowing me to achieve my engineering dreams. And I just wanted to say Anabasi. Thank you. That's my favorite video, so I'm so glad we were able to share that. Um, we're going to switch into breakout rooms, so we'll have three breakout rooms, one with UAF's RSS and one with TAN Chiefs Conference, and then through the Doyen Foundation breakout room, I will be going through our scholarship application. But thank you to everyone who's logged on, and if you don't plan on attending the breakout rooms, feel free to log off. Thank you so much. I'll leave my video on that we were having lots of people with videos so on was having making some little bit of bumps in the road. So I'll turn mine off if anybody's having problems. Oh yeah, I saw that in the chat. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, hey, I did. Amy, who do we have on? Um, I believe that is Casey. Good night, Okay. Okay, can you see the Dwan Foundation website? Nope, we see the Rural Student Services YouTube. Oh no. Oh, I opened the wrong one. Okay. Okay, now can you see the website? Yep. Oh, it's just me and you now. Who's on my phone? Oh, I thought that was you. Okay, so I'll go through the application. So from our Doyen Foundation website, you can create a student account through the student login. And this is our brand new scholarship portal. It's called AwardSpring. And the first step would be to create a student account. And then here's the student account login. So you'll just create your username and your password. Are our students in the background? Yes. Yeah. I recognize them. Hold on. Let me switch this off really quick. Okay, and this is the scholarship portal once you log in and there's three options that the dashboard will show you your different follow-ups if you're eligible for to receive different scholarships. So if you were wanting to apply for the level up non-degree seeking scholarship, you'd complete this follow-up just to finalize what else is required for it. And then here's our competitive scholarship, which includes four essays and two letters of recommendation, which is Separate from our full-time and part-time award, the full-time and part-time award is just a general application that requests your information and not the essays and the letters of recommendation. And here is the list of our different scholarships. And here is the scholarship application. 
So the first tab is the requirements. So this is what is required. If you are never been awarded before, this, uh, you are required to complete the application, send an official transcript, proof of academic enrollment, and class schedule by the deadline of May 16th. And then here's the requirements for students who applied for the previous funding period, which is summer 2022. So if a student is going to the summer semester and they've been awarded a scholarship, they'll complete these um, requirements. So they'll do the fall 22 application. All applications must be received by the deadline. Official transcripts once their summer semester is completed, so by August 17th, and class schedule by August 17th. And here's just a message to um, that is for the Doyle Unlimited shareholder verification, just to let students know not to send it to themselves and to send it to us. And then here is the scholarship I application. I have a question. Yes. Um, and where do they get the... Um the shareholder verification from? It's in the application. Okay. And they just fill that out themselves? Yes. They don't have to send it to Doyle Unlimited? They have to send it to Doyle Foundation. It's right in the application. I was getting okay. almost there. Okay. Okay. So this is the first portion of the application. So it's the, it shows what tab. So this is the Doyle Unlimited shareholder enrollment data. So we'll need student ID. And this just separates us if a student has a similar name and date of birth, types of shares, are you related to a Doyan Foundation board member? Are you an enrollee and child of an enrollee or unknown? And then here, this is the list of our board members just to check if you're related to them. And here is the shareholder verification form. So before I submitted it, it requires a recipient name, and email. So for the name, it would be Doyan Foundation, and the recipient email is scholarships at doyan.com. This just helps us verify that each and every student is a Doyan shareholder. And this just verifies that you've sent the shareholder verification to Doyan Foundation and you were approved. And the next step is our scholarship information. Can I can I ask another question? Yes. How do how do I how does a student know if they're A, B, C, or D? Um, usually they don't. That's just an option if they do, and then we can update it once we uh, verify them. Okay, so they don't have to know, or they can call Doyon Limited Shareholder Records, right? Yes. Okay. And here's general information. We use this to sign students up for email reminders and text reminders before each and every deadline, and we ask for just the permanent data, which is all internal, and school mailing addresses and personal email address. So we ask that students use their, not their school one so that we can stay in contact with them. And here is the school data. So this is the name of school and have you been accepted to the school and student enrollment data and credit hours, accounting, bachelors. And this just helps us uh, categorize what students we have. And then this is a different option. This is new. so. If whether or not you select this question, it will make the competitive application available. So if you don't want to apply for competitive, you click no, but then if you want to, then these remaining questions will appear. And here is where you would upload documents. So this is for transcripts and a enrollment verification and class schedule. And here is the applicant's agreement. This just goes over that we're able to share your information with if a parent calls and they ask, um, only if it's approved by the student. And also we ask that students stay in contact after they graduate so that we can keep track of our alumni. And then electronic signatures, just to show that the student has completed the application. And then once you've done all that, you're able to submit, but if you're missing something, the application will not allow you to submit. And that is our Duan Foundation application and we're always available to help students if they run into an issue and they have any questions we're available by phone and email and we get back as soon as we can two questions yes this is great because i haven't run through it one um and what if it if you don't have everything completed does it tell you what you're missing yes it'll tell you so this says in progress and these are completed so if it's 
not completed, it'll say in progress. So this one is not letting me submit because I didn't provide this information. And then once I do, I'll be able to submit. Okay, got it. And then the other question, uh, the other, I guess it's more of a comment. The reason that it asks for permanent mailing addresses is because oftentimes people will change schools and locations, and then we wouldn't want their information to get sent to an old address. So permanent, like your parents' home or um, where it is that you would, you know, get your mail, you know, would make sure that they get your mail is why we need that information, right? Yes. Okay. Any questions to our iPhone user? Or from our questions? No. Okay, well, thank you for logging in. Um, we'll just wait, we have two more minutes before the breakout room switch. Who is on the iPhone? This is Rowena from Tope. Oh, hey. Um, so my kid is kind of tied up at school. So I just called in to get the information and I'll have her rewatch this recorded Zoom. Oh, good. And also, if she has any questions or anything, um, let us know because, you know, Pearson is really great about if people are even having internet connections, going, just going online and helping them too. Okay. Yeah, and if she wants like just one on one like questions about opportunities like just sharing what it is that she wants to do. It's a, your daughter, right? Yeah, she's okay. planning to go to school for radiology tech. Oh, cool. So Pearson can talk to her about different opportunities. Okay. Yeah, just feel free to give us a call. And if she's attending in the fall, our deadline is May 16th. And I'd be happy to assist her beforehand just to make sure that she is awarded for fall. Okay. I was hoping she would call in or herself, but I guess she's busy at school, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, she goes to what school? She goes to Tok High School. Oh, okay. Tok. Yeah. Cool. Shay Gunter. Yeah. Well, it's good that you were able to get on because, you know, one of the things that I learned in going to the culture camps was that it's definitely like the moms, the grandmas and grandpas and aunties and uncles that, you know, really students need that support to, to kind of keep nudging them along. So that's, right. I'm glad you're on. Thank you. Kirsten, are they gonna pull us into the room? Um, yes, it says we have a minute and will automatically switch us between rooms or I'll okay. switch the students. And Rowena, I don't know, you know, if you know, but we have that um, non degree seeking students. So if there's like certifications or licenses or renewals or anything that you're thinking of, we have the, that non degree seeking and you can apply every single year. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. It looks like it did automatically. Okay. Hi, Hannah. I'm Pearson. Um, it's nice to see you logged in. Um, what school are you from? I'm from Ajkum. Oh, nice to see you. We just went there for the career fair. Mm -hmm. Did we see you there? I think so. Yeah, you look familiar. We saw like 100 to 200 kids. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, can you see our Doyne Foundation website? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just do a run through of our scholarship application. So it can be accessed through our Dwayne Foundation webpage, which is just dwaynefoundation.com. And you'll click the student login. And all students are required to create a student account. So I'll just create our Dwayne one. Okay, and this is our scholarship portal. And 
It shows how to start the application. And then here is our different scholarships that we offer. So this is the competitive award, full-time and part-time award, and it shows the deadlines. And these don't have deadlines, so you can apply anytime for a kickstart in high school. Uh, kickstart high school to college and level up non-degree seeking. So if you are still, uh, if you're not graduating this year and you are taking college credits, you can apply for the Kickstart if you're a Glenn shareholder. And here is our scholarship application. So it's all in one, one area. And the first portion of the application just goes over our scholarship requirements. So here is for the fall semester, the current application period is for fall 2022, and the deadline to apply is May 16th. So for a first-time student who's never been awarded or has not been awarded for the previous semester, which was summer 2022, they'll submit the fall 22 application, official transcripts, proof of academic enrollment, and class schedule by the deadline of May 16th. And if a student cannot submit the proof of academic enrollment or class schedule or official transcript by the deadline, we ask that they tell us beforehand and we will work with them. For students who are awarded for summer and they're applying for fall, they'll need the fall application by the deadline of May 16th and they'll need official transcripts and class schedule by August 17th. And then down here, it just shows you what to do next, so next step. And this is just a little message of how to complete the shareholder verification form, which is in the next tab. We use the shareholder, Doi Unlimited shareholder verification just to uh, verify that each and every student is a Doi Unlimited shareholder. And here is our scholarship application. So we require student ID just to keep track of each and every student. Um, date of birth, type of shares. If a student doesn't know what type of share they are, they can it will internally update it once we verify what's, what class you are. And we can't award students who are related to Duan Foundation board members. So if you're related, you can find out through this link, which will take you to our board of directors on our Duan Foundation website. And if you're related to this person, any of our board members, like if they're your mom or anything, then we can't award award. Okay, that's we can that. award if they're like a cousin or a second cousin, right? Yes, not immediate family. So if it's like your mom, but if it's cousins, we can still award. And then here is our Doyon shareholder verification form. So you could just put Doyon Foundation in this part. And the email is scholarships at doyon.com. So we use this to verify if you are a Doyon shareholder and this gets sent to Doyon Limited shareholder records. And this portion just asks that you sent it to scholarships at doyon.com just to make sure that you're verified as a shareholder because if you're not verified by the deadline, if you send it to yourself, then sometimes we can't approve after the deadline. And then here is permanent, um, permanent personal information. So cell phone number, phone, permanent mailing address. We ask for this just in case a student moves or switches schools. Um, so we're still able to mail documents and have their permanent information on file. We have in-school mailing address because some students have different mailing addresses based off of school, gender. And this is just a message that this is for the fall semester just because sometimes students wanna apply ahead of time and we only apply, um, have applications available per funding period and it closes at the deadline. So this is um, the school data. So this asks what school you're going to, have you been accepted, enrollment status, credits enrolled. This helps us verify what scholarship you're applying for. So if you're a part-time student or full-time, part-time is three to 11 credits and full-time is 12 or more. Field of study, this helps us keep track of what students are pursuing, what degree, and then different degrees what grade you are. So this is asking what grade you'll be going into, not if you're currently a high school student and you're graduating high school in May. So you'd put freshman if you're a freshman in the fall. And then GPA of last attended school. And then have you attended? So this one is different. So if you click yes, I'll ask you more questions. And then if you answer these questions, I'll uh, make the competitive application available at the end of the at the end after you're able to submit. And then here is the document requirement. So you're able to upload a receipt of your transcript or the, or the transcript from the school, directly sent from the school. 
academic enrollment and your class schedule. And then here is the applicant agreement. This just is assigning the release of consent. I give consent to join foundation to use my name, photograph, or image, and if applicable, student information and materials handling, but not limited to. And this also asks that students stay in touch with us after they graduate, just so we can keep track of where our alumni is in the world and agree to the terms and submit that they completed all application requirements. And then after you've done everything, it's able to submit. But if you're missing, missing certain things, like if it says in progress, it won't let you submit. And that is our Duane Foundation application. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, thank you so much to everyone for logging on. I'm so happy to see the turnout and thank you Circle for calling in. Hannah, what, uh, what year are you at school? I'm currently a junior, I'll be a senior in the fall. Oh, cool. Do you know what you want to go to school for? I'm currently undecided between three different fields, one being the medical fields, one being law, and one working with animals. Oh, cool. So a little bit of time to decide. And I think Ben has some great advice, like join some clubs and do some things when you're taking your basic classes to kind of see what you enjoy. Yeah. Anybody in circle have any ideas what they're thinking about going to school for or going to do later on? Yes, we have some ideas. Um, we have just the two high school students, the rest are middle school. So, Charles, you can go first. What would you like to do after school? Electrician. I don't know if you heard him, but he wants to be an electrician. And then, you, Laura? Uh, I want to look into welding. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Welding. <laughs> I want to work at Taco Bell. Oh. $20. For four hours. <laughs> well, you know what, when you're going into the fields like the electrician and whatnot, we do offer the, um, the non degree seeking students uh, or scholarship that you can apply for each year. So if you want to like upgrade your skills or um, re get recertified or get, you know, a test for your administrator license, because that's sort of a lot of the big money is made in the administrator field when you get into those areas. Um, we have that you can apply every single year and it's up to $3,000 per year um, for non degree seeking um, scholarships. So keep that in mind as you move forward in those fields. Welding and, is a two-year degree, so if you are going to be a welder after you graduate, you'll apply for our full-time award or a competitive scholarship, which is slightly more money. And Hannah, you had a question? Um, do you know how much the courses usually cost for like a, one year? Um, so incoming freshmen, depending on how many credits you're taking, so if you're a full-time student taking 12 or more credits, it can be between 3500 and up to Depend, it just depends on if you're living in the dorms too. But starting out, if you did not live in the dorms and you're just taking courses, it's around 3,500 for UAF. And then if you're doing, if you're living on campus, you have to have a meal plan, you have to pay for your dorm and you have to have um, different, your books and everything, it can range up to 10,000. So apply for every scholarship you can think of that's out there. And once you apply for the competitive scholarship, just use those applications to apply for 100 scholarships. And um, so that way you have enough to cover everything. Yes. And it's more and expensive if you go out of state. Yes, definitely. My um, daughter paid $14,000 for one semester at UNLV. Yeah, school's pretty expensive. So before you go, so next year when you're graduating, I suggest that you start looking for scholarships in February. You wait, if you're planning on attending the universities of Alaska Fairbanks, oh, we switched. We lost her. <laughs> Darn it. We had so many things to say. I'm just kidding. I know. I figured that there was questions once we started like talking to them, they'll get more comfortable. Yeah. Oh, she's back. Oh, hi, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> <You're> back. <laughs> Pearson was just finishing up her sentence. <laughs> oh yeah, I was just letting you know to next year when you're a senior, just to start applying for scholarships in February, if you're doing the Universities of Alaska, 
They have the UA Foundation, which is you can apply for so many scholarships and they're just essays. So if you wanna do our essay questions, you could copy and paste them into UA and they have lots of scholarships. I've gotten scholarships from them and it helped me pay for school. Um, there's other opportunities. There's your tribal uh, corporation and you can possibly receive scholarships from Doyon and TCC. So there's just so many resources and before in hand next year, just give us a call and I'll do my best to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to go through the application. It's nice to see different schools on here. Um, can everyone see our Doyan Foundation website? Am I supposed to be in a different group? Um, I believe at the top where it says breakout rooms, you can click to go into a different one. Uh, hold on. Okay, hopefully in a second you'll get switched. Um, I just messaged our admin, Catherine, to switch you to a different breakout room just so you have an opportunity to see everyone. Okay, I'm gonna go through our Doyle Foundation webpage. So our scholarship portal is accessed through our Doyle Foundation website. So it's just doylefoundation.com and you'll go to student login. And the student login will take you to the scholarship portal. And here is our scholarship portal. This is brand new. This is, we just started using this in January. And here is a great picture of our super awesome students. And you'll create a student account. Just register, register your email and name and password. And then you'll be able to sign in. And here is what the portal looks like once you have created your student account. This is the dashboard. So if you've started an application, I'll tell you how the percentage of how much more you need before you can submit your application. Under scholarships, this just shows our scholarship opportunities and their deadline. So a competitive full-time and part-time award, the Kickstart scholarship, and the Level Up non-degree seeking scholarship. And here is the application. So our application can be found all in one place and there's different tabs just to make sure that you have everything. So here is our scholarship requirements. So our next deadline is May 16th for the fall 2022 scholarship. And that is our current application period. So if you wanted to apply for next spring, you'd not be able to until that's open after the fall semester has been finalized. For first time students who haven't been awarded or awarded before the semester began, so for summer, you would submit your fall 2022 application by the deadline of May 16th, official transcripts, proof of academic enrollment, class schedule, and this would all need to be received by the deadline, but sometimes incoming freshmen don't have their documents by the deadline. We just need to be informed beforehand and we will work with you. For students who've applied for summer, so for the previous scholarship semester, they're considered a returning student. They'll complete the fall application by the deadline and their official transcripts and class schedule will be due August 17th once their summer applications, I mean, once their summer classes have been finalized. And then the next portion is the uh, an important message just regarding the um, the Doyle Limited shareholder verification. So we use the verification to verify that each and every student is a Doyle shareholder. And then here is Doyle Limited shareholder verification. So this is just the information that we send to Doyle Limited to verify that you're a shareholder. It just asks your student ID, date of birth, type of shares, and if you don't have what class you are, we can confirm with shareholder records and then we'll update this internally if you don't know the answer. And then we ask if you're a student is related to a Dwayne Limited Board or Dwayne Foundation Board member and this just verifies that if you aren't, but if you are, um, if your immediate family member such as a daughter or husband or anything like that, you can't be awarded, but if they're your cousin, you can still be awarded and that can be accessed right here. And this just brings students to our Doyle Foundation website where the board of directors are listed. And 
And then here is our shareholder verification. So students can put Doyon right here, and then foundation and scholarships. And this will get sent to us so that we can send it to shareholder records. If it's sent to you, we don't get the notification that students have, are trying to be verified. It'll go to your personal email, and then students won't be able to be awarded because we weren't able to verify their shareholder status before the deadline. And here's the personal information, and we use this to sign students up to be um, for text messages and emails before the deadline, and permanent mailing address would be for our storyteller, if we're sending out paper newsletters, we'll need your permanent address. And then we have in school because some students aren't attending school and staying in the dormitory. So they have their in school addresses. And then gender. And then here is the school data. So you would need to put your school and we just need this so that we can mail the scholarship checks. And have you been accepted in full-time or part-time? This helps us to uh, distinguish what scholarship you're applying for. And then what your degree and field of study and credits are. And academic status, GPA, just generalized information. Most scholarship applications will ask the same thing. Overall cumulative GPA, previous schools attended, years attended, certificate degree sought, graduation and if you've graduated from an academic facility. And here is the document requirements. So this is transcript from the last school attended, academic enrollment verification and class schedule. And here is the applicant agreement. So this is just signing the release of consent form. So if we're using a student for our storyteller profile, which our storyteller episodes can be found on our Duane Foundation website. We'll need a signed release of consent just to be able to publish that. If a student is selected. And then we also have um, more questions is making sure that students keep in contact with us after they graduate just to track our alumni and where they are in the world. And then also just making sure that students have really looked at all of their application requirements and that they have done everything required of them. And then once you've done everything, it'll let you submit application. But if you're missing something, it won't it'll stay gray. So just make sure to have everything beforehand. And that is our scholarship application. Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. If if you hit submit and it doesn't let you hit submit, how do you know what's missing or if something's missing? It says in progress or completed. So if something is in progress, then you'll just need to click back in there and then it'll highlight what needs to be added. So after you complete all of the requirements, and so if I completed all this, and everything else it would allow me to submit. So this will turn this yellow color once everything has been completed. Okay, any questions from our students? <clears throat> I also forgot to mention that we have a storyteller um, series. So this can be found under our news. And this just shows everything cool that we're working on or something that is going on in the community. We share internship opportunities, training opportunities, um, events. So this is our most recent storyteller episode from our alumni student, Ronald Ranch Forget. And he is a has a degree in petroleum engineering. So if you click on this, it'll take you to YouTube and you'll be able to watch the full storyteller episode. And I think it's a great tool because it helps students make connections with other people out in their communities. I have a, I have a question for Ariella or Northway or Krushank uh, Beaver or uh, Shag Look. What kind of, um, what are you guys looking for for going on for continued education? They don't want to speak, but I'll speak for them. I have a couple of kiddos who are interested in the health field, one of whom is not here. Um, and then I do have a couple who are more interested in sort of the technical aspects like mechanics and then, you know, heavy equipment operating, things like that. So that's so far. How about it, Krushank and Beaver? Good. 
So William will share what he wants to do after high school. So like the program that really spoke out to me had to be like the 15 week health aid training. And uh, for me, I really want to go into the health field. So your grants and opportunities that go into like the health field in general, including that I'm really appreciative of. And yeah, I really look forward into going into that Thank and you. applying for that. Thank you, William. Jason? Thank you, William. How about uh, Shagluck? Oh, Jason has something to share too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What do you want to do after high school, Jason? After high school, I either want to be an aerospace engineer, a biologist, or a geologist. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. How about Shagluck? Joy, you're on. Mute. Joy, you're on mute. Uh, I am a UA scholar and I plan on going to UAA after high school to, uh, to study early, early childhood development. Very cool. Thank you guys for, for sharing that. Um, you know, keep in mind as you're applying for a scholarship, sometimes the competitive might seem like a little bit of a pain. Uh, you're getting the letters of reference and writing an essay, but let me tell you, once you write that essay and you get those letters, the possibilities are wide open and you can reuse those letters for scholarships all over the place. Um, and have, you know to be able to have enough money to be able to cover school. And in your positions, if you have to go for any like licensures or recertifications each year, um, we do have our non-degree seeking student, our non-degree seeking scholarship that even after you get your degree, um, you can continue to get those continuing education uh, credits in those different fields. So like for health aid, uh, William, you had shared in the health field, if there's recertifications, you can apply every year for up to $3,000 to be able to get those certifications um, through a scholarship. So lots of opportunities out there. And if anyone wants to just talk to us more about opportunities that might be more specific to you or you need help with anything or even applying online, um, give us a call and we can go through one-on-one -on -one with you as well. We have a great team um, to help with student success. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Um, before we switch, I just want to say thank you to everyone for calling in. It's so exciting to see all these students and hear what they want to do after high school and just know that we're always here to support you, even if it's not with scholarships. If you are having a hard time, feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to help with whatever we can. Okay, we'll switch in just a second here. I don't want to get cut off in mid sentence, but I wanted to mention the um, kickstart, which is the high school college credit that students can apply for each semester, up to $400 to be able to pay for a college course. So if you're looking at an online class that you might wanna be taking um, and just kind of checking out what's out there, um, please feel free to apply for that scholarship. My niece, um, she's a junior and she's getting her nursing certificate um, and it was all done online. There we go. I think we're getting pulled out. Oh, yep. Let me let her know. Okay, everyone switched. She said TCC logged off. Oh. We must have lost them somehow. Hi, Sia. And Circle. 
Are we re going back around again? Um, I think these are new students. I haven't seen them yet, but um, I'll let her know. Um, Circle might have gone to all of the gone to all of the breakout oh, rooms. Circle. Yeah. Ah. Say hi, Circle. It's just us again. <laughs> and Hannah, um, Hannah, if you want to log off, you can. But if you want to stay on, to, if you have any questions after, um, it looks like you went to all the breakout rooms. And Circle Two, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to log off, you are feel uh. Feel free to. It looks like you guys have visited all of the breakout rooms. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions, please send me an email and I'd be happy to help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Yeah. And hello to our new members. Yes, hello to our new members. Okay. Where, where is everybody from while she's getting to her page? Mm -hmm. I'm right here in Fairbanks. <laughs> I see ya. Hi. How about Thank Tristan you. and Damien? Where are you guys from? Maybe we can't hear Tristan. I saw him unmute for a second. Melinda, where are you from? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you guys. Um, can you see our Joanne Foundation web page? Yep. Okay. So this, before we get start, uh, started, I wanted to say thank you to everyone. And I'm going to be going through our Joanne Foundation website and our scholarship application. So here is our Doyan Foundation webpage. It is just doyanfoundation.com. And to access our scholarship portal, it is the student login in the corner. Once you click the student login, it'll take you to the homepage where you'll log into your student account. And this is our new portal with our, a picture of our wonderful students. And this is our Doyan Foundation scholarship portal. So once you've created a student account, it just asks for a name, email, and um, and that's it. <laughs> Name and email. Once you've created it, it pulls you into the portal. And here is the dashboard, it, and it shows you how much more you need to complete the application. And under scholarships, it shows our scholarship opportunities. So we have four different ones the competitive scholarship, full time and part time award, kickstart for high school to college students. So if you're in high school and you are pursuing college credits while you're still in high school, you're eligible for the kickstart scholarship and the level up non-degree seeking scholarship, which is for non-degree seeking students who are doing recertifications or CDL trainings or anything under 120 hours, you're able to be awarded. And it also shows the deadlines. We don't have deadlines for Kickstart and level up. You can apply year round, but the deadlines for competitive and full-time part-time award are May 16th for the fall semester. And here is our scholarship application. So the first tab is just um, our requirements. So if you read through this, I'll let you know what is required to be awarded by the deadline. So for a student who's never been awarded before or hasn't been awarded for the previous application period, which would be the summer 2022 semester, the application deadline for that was May 15th. Um, this is, so new students would need the fall application by the deadline of May 16th, official transcripts, proof of academic enrollment, and class schedule. Sometimes new students are unable to get these documents by the deadline. So you just need to contact us beforehand and we'll be happy to work with you just to make sure that we know that your documents aren't ready. Um, application does need to be submitted by the deadline though. And for returning students, so a returning student is someone who's been awarded the previous semester. So if you were awarded the summer scholarship and you're applying for fall, you'd need to complete the application by the deadline. And official transcripts and class schedule are due August 17th after the summer semester grades have been finalized. And here's an important message regarding our Doyen Limited Shareholder Verification, which is this next tab. It just lets you know, do not send the verification to yourself because we're unable to be notified and unable to be able to send your um, information to shareholder records. So if that's not received before the deadline, then we're unable to verify. 
And here is our shareholder verification, it is us your student ID, date of birth, type of share, so what class you are. And if you don't know this information, you could just put when you think you are and we'll update it internally after we've sent your information to shareholder records. Are you related to our Duane Foundation, to a Duane Foundation board member? So if you're related um, by immediate family, so if they're your mom or your, um, your wife or something, <laughs> you're unable to be awarded. And here is the list of our Duan Foundation board members. If they're your cousin or aunt, you're still able to be awarded. And then here is our shareholder verification. This sends us the link that you've completed it and then we'll come in and verify you after we sent your information to shareholder records at Doyon Limited. For this part, you'd put Doyon Foundation and then the recipient email is the scholarships at doyon.com. And then this just verifies that you've followed instructions and completed the shareholder verification and sent it to scholarships and not to your personal email because when it's sent to your personal, we're unable to verify you. And here is permanent personal information. This is just used to contact students. So if you don't have, if you're missing a document or we need to get a hold of you, we'll utilize this portion and permanent mailing address um, and email and phone. We use that to send text reminders and email reminders for the before the deadlines. And then we have permanent mailing address and in-school mailing address because in school, sometimes students are living on campus and they'll change often. So we ask that you provide both and gender. And then here is school data. So this is um, where we determine what school you're going to and what, where we would mail the scholarship check if you're awarded. And have you been accepted to above mentioned school? So if you put UAF and you were accepted, you'd put yes. And then full-time and part-time. A part-time student is a student who is um, enrolled in three to 11 credits and a full-time student is 12 or more. And then we just ask what, how many credits you will be taking for the semester applying for, field of study and what degree you are seeking. And then academic status. So this is the what semester you'll be applying for. So if you're currently a high school student going to be a freshman for the fall semester, you'll put a freshman. And then GPA requirement of the last school attendance. So this is the GPA from your high school. And then here is information required to complete the competitive application. Documents, this is where you'll upload your transcripts, academic enrollment, and semester and class schedule for semester applying for. And here is the applicant agreement. So this is where you agree that if we were to profile a student for a storyteller episode, you would verify that you are okay with that. And we ask that all students stay in contact after they graduate, just so that we can keep track of our alumni. And then also we ask that students review their application just to make sure that everything is correct before submitting. And if you have completed all your information, right now it won't let me submit. It's the submit button is enabled because I didn't complete all the information. So if you didn't and it's not available, it will say either completed or in progress. So if it says in progress, you'll go back into there and you'll make sure you completed all the information. And once you have, they'll let you submit. And if you're eligible for other scholarships like our competitive, on dashboard, it'll say follow-ups and you'll be able to apply for the competitive through there. It asks for four essay questions, so you'll need to provide that and two letters of recommendation by the deadline. And that is our Duane Foundation Scholarship application. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Melinda, were you trying to say something? I saw you unmute. Yes. Okay, not seeing any questions, but we do want to ask um, what all the students plan on doing after they graduate. If someone wants to provide that, Lucas, Melinda, Tristan, Damien. <laughs>
we have a shy group in this one. <laughs> well, thank you to everyone for logging on. It, we're so excited to see the turnout. This is our first ever education fair and we're glad it, we could do it virtually just so we can see more students across our region of the Doyon region the T and the TCC region. And if you want to just kind of talk about what you're thinking about going to school for, even if you're not sure, give us a call and we can help share with you which scholarship would be good for you. If you're not going to go for a college degree, we have our non-degree seeking um, scholarship as well. So we can kind of connect you with what might be the best option for you. Thank you, guys. Sia, Thank did you, you want to share anything? <laughs> Sia? Yeah. Um, hold on a second. Did I unmute myself? Okay, I did. Um, so I'm, I work at Effie Cochrane and I know some students that are seeking like extended education and stuff, but um, I wish and I hope that we can spark interest, like let's say as late as like the end of their 10th grade year, um, just because a lot of students that I know um, down when I lived in Anchorage and here, um, they don't have the support. They don't have the adult support. And so it's nice that we have our um, corporation and our help from you guys, but they don't know it's out there just because it's not talked about. It's not a daily language in their life. So it would be nice um, to connect with you guys and have you guys come over. Um, I'm planning a bunch of different things in my head, but they need to be put into stone yet. Um, I... Um, I think a lot of it is, um, I was told as a young young adult, I guess, that I could go to college, but a lot of students don't, aren't told that as kids. They're not told that they, they're gonna be anything basically. Um, so I, I like seeing the young adults that are on here and I encourage you to seek some sort of uh, extended, um, education because it helps fill your brain and um, whether it's uh, a trade school that you go to or if it's college or exploring out of state um, it's available if you just look for the funding and the scholarships and stuff like that so yeah I'll share my email in the chat just so that I can touch base with you guys okay thank you we actually plan on doing this education prayer it's going to be an annual thing so that is one of our goals is to be able to reach our youth and just let them know that they have all these available resources and that we're not just here to give you money. We're here to offer all kinds of support as much as we can and as much as we know how to do it. Um, we agree that we had to start off college without knowing these resources. So I'm so glad that we're able to provide this resource now. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Thank those you words. See you, da Damien, did you had your hand raised? No, okay. I saw your hand moving around. Maybe you're giving somebody rabbit ears next to you. <laughs> if you guys um, don't mind, I'm going to bring you back to the main session. Okay. okay and, thank you, Catherine. Invite, invite us to your classrooms, invite us to your schools, and invite us to your communities. That's what we're here for is to help support the students. So Yes, we'd love to so help as much as we can. I can't find the chat. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Thank you. Nice to see everyone back in one area. <laughs> um, before we log off and do our thank yous, I do want to take a picture for everyone. So if you could turn your camera on, this would just be posted to our website just so for next year students will see what kind of turnout we had and so that they'll know to join. And thank you so much. Um, I'm going to do a screenshot <laughs> really quick. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us today for our first ever education fair. I'm so excited to be able to provide this resource from TCC and RSS. Um, I'm really thankful for the turnout. This will be an annual thing just because we do want to reach our youth and we want to assist them and let them know what kind of resources are out there. Um, so thank you so much. Um, does anyone have any questions or 
Do we have some final words from RSS? I just want to say thank you so much for coming today and, you know, coming to opportunities like this really shows that you are, you know, valuing education. So uh, take advantage of every opportunity that you get. And now that you know who we are, please reach out if um, you have any questions about UAF or just college in general. We'd be happy to talk about funding or um, any opportunities available. And just know that we are proud of you and that you're going in the right direction and you have it inside of you for what, what you want to do in your life and just keep it up. Continue to be curious and uh, you'll make it really fun. Yes, ask questions and utilize every single use resource available to you. Um, there's all kinds. Always ask for help. You're never alone. There's so many different people that are in your corner and that want to see you succeed. So just ask questions always. And yes, be curious. Thank you for saying that. Um, any questions? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, and invite the Doyon Foundation to your schools to talk to the students and do activities. That, that's what we're here for is to be able to support our students. So please extend an invitation if you have a career fair, or education fair, a culture camp or something that we can hopefully uh, be able to attend and, and talk and work with students. Yes, we'd love to. So if you have any questions or if you want us to meet with students before they graduate, just let us know and we'd be happy to set up something. Thank you so much to everyone. And just a quick reminder before you sign out, make sure your name and name of the school you're with is entered in the chat. That way you can be put in for those drawings. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Take care, everyone. I think Northway said they emailed you. Um, they didn't put it in the chat though. Oh yes, they sent me an email. So thank you Northway for sending that beforehand. Um, I'll stay on um, just for a couple more minutes just in case anyone has questions, but if you are good to go, um, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time. We have a scholarship information session for the fall semester. So if you're planning on attending fall, we'll next be available for that. to help you. I don't think we have, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>